How do governments rise to meet the complex challenges of delivering healthier, safer, and greener societies? Scotland radically reformed its civil service to do just that, and a new INSEAD case study documents its experience. Here today to talk about the Scottish experiment is Eve Doss, Emeritus Professor of Strategic Management at INSEAD, and also a contributor to INSEAD's European Competitiveness Initiative. Eve, welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you. Tell me, what are the main ingredients of the process of reform Scotland used to reform its civil service? Well, the core idea was that the government had been unable historically to deal with complex social problems like uh, juvenile delinquency and youth inclusion, and that doing more of the same was not going to deliver the results they would like. So that was the starting point. That was the first ingredient. And essentially after that came a process of first uh, shared learning, kind of a collective journey, where a critical mass of senior civil servants and senior leaders in Scotland were collectively discovering the gap between their expectation and the continuation of the current policies leading to what you could call almost satisfactory underperformance, plus a sense of duty toward the part of the population that needed those services most, which essentially were the poorest people. The, other, the third ingredient, and that involved reorganizing the top management group, making it smaller and more focused. That involved providing a more strategic perspective within which to align the action of these various government departments, which was a combination of the Scottish Nationalist Party having set a series of national goals and of Sir John's team having developed strategic scenarios for the future. What do you think are the main lessons for other governments who are also looking to reform their civil service or become a government that's much more effective? And I think for them the main message was, gee, it can be done. So I think just the fact that Scotland did it is really a very powerful message. Uh, I think the other implication is this can be made to happen but it requires a, a very, I would say, clever and thoughtful and careful management process or leadership process. Uh, because if you look at Scotland carefully, there was a, a nice timing, an alternation of periods of change and, in a sense, periods of latency where two things were going on. First, Sir John and his people were waiting to see the results from previous changes and stabilizing them. Can the experience of a small country like Scotland also be applied to a large country like the US or China? I would say the main challenge in my mind does not necessarily come from size per se. Um, I think it comes from the nature of the policy process. You need either a very clear majority or a relatively consistent and coherent set of parties, even if one is in charge, which are willing to collaborate, if you wish. If you look at a country like Finland today, uh, it's a coalition of seven different parties running the country. So you would say, my God, this is impossible. Actually, they make it work to an extent. Why? Because these parties are relatively moderate, because they have mechanisms for conciliation across the parties. For instance, recently in the post Nokia debacle, they agreed on a national 10 year strategy for trying to pick up the pieces and rebuild what they call digital Finland from the ruins of Nokia. Um, and the interesting point there is they have all the political leaders committed to this long, -time, long term horizon, which is way beyond the next electoral cycles. What's the implications of the Scottish experiment, uh, more broadly speaking, for European competitiveness in, uh, overall? So I think there can be a huge advantage by resolving some of these long lasting problems that only get worse over time. Uh, and I think if governments do not become much better at developing integrated answers, to these issues, then the loss of European competitiveness will get worse. If they manage to develop these capabilities, then the situation can improve relatively rapidly. And the second reason is governments are enormously important, not just in what they spend, but in the signals they give to entrepreneurs, the, thing, the, the uh, signals they give to investors, their ability to create innovation policies that make sense, and that, that also is a complex problem because it requires, again, a whole series of different ministries, units, services at the national, regional, and local levels to work together collaboratively 
over long-time friends. What are the important questions that remain from the Scottish experiment that you think uh, you need to get good answers to before one could say that this Scottish example uh, is, broadly speaking, successful? And if you look at the Scottish example, it unfolded over a relatively long period. So there is a question of, is that time period acceptable, or is there a sense of urgency that would require to make it shorter? And is that possible? Uh, another challenge which is very important is, again, Scotland is perhaps not a unique case, but a very propitious case, because they had this nationalistic sense of ambition. Whether other countries have the same drive for long-term ambition um, isn't clear to me, or whether they are going to fall victim to short-term politicking and electoral considerations only. When you look at the literature on uh, corporate change and renewal, it gives a lot of weight to, to the role of the CEO. The reality is more complex. It's a set of interplay, interplaying interest groups, uh, professions, functional groups, units, and so on. So I think what we certainly can learn from watching clearly or looking clearly at the story of the change in Scotland is how to effectuate some very deep and constructive strategic change in a situation where power is diffuse, where there are multiple centers of uh, authority, where you have to make the change without rocking the boat, where you cannot just dismiss and fire the people you don't like. Yves Doss, thank you very much for talking to us today on NCN Knowledge. Thank you.